Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and welcome to part two of the Grind Your Own uh, Square series. Uh, there was a little confusion in part one. Um, they said, I only showed two pairs of squares. What you're getting in the kit is three pairs, and uh, this is your kit when you're done. Um, it's a it's a pair of uh, three inch uh, 9045s, a pair of two inch 6030s, and a pair of two inch 9045s. So you're getting three pairs uh, of squares, and, and these are due to break, I don't know, in October sometime. Now in part one, what we did was all the flat work, and what you have uh, what you should have completed by now is all the, the, the tops of these webs, and the tops of these fences right here, and on the opposite side. So all just flat work, you've kind of roughed in against uh, your fence right here, you know, you just just barely kissed it with a side wheel. You didn't really get in there and clean that uh, the side of that fence. But what we're going to do on your on your 9045s, you're going to do the 90 degree side fence, um, grinding to an inside corner, and then on the uh, on the 6030s, you're going to go to the inside. Uh, fence of the long side of the square not the short side okay so get get your long side over with and uh, we're gonna we're gonna show you how to do that and I've already shown this on the channel but what and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, you know kind of cross load and use some of that footage I used to uh, grind into that inside corner now I don't want you to do anything to the outer fences out here all you're doing is just creating one flat surface in there and uh, you know when you when you do your grind make sure you're you're very happy with it you see that cross hatch you have to be able to see very well and uh, you want to check it to make sure you've got a straight grind lay it on a one two three block and don't really worry about absolute parallelism or you know you know or the surface finish or anything on this outside but I do want you to check it for teeter-totter, check it for rock, make sure you've got a nice straight grind, make sure you're deburred and cleaned, and make sure it's uh, devoid of any wire edges or anything like that. And make sure that this, this little guy is sitting down flat, and I mean, you can run parallelism and you'll be probably within a, a thou or so, but you're, you're still got a very unstable, uneven surface out here that was you know heat treated and everything, and ha that hasn't been ground yet. But the inside edge, Check it for uh, check it for rock. Make sure it's nice and straight. All right, but uh, let's cut to some of that other footage and uh, and check that out. You know, let's 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 take a look at what it takes to grind to an inside corner, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, enjoy. I'm grinding up to a uh, an inside corner right here, and creating that little relief groove for the inside corner. Now that's all grind. There's no milling or anything involved when we're over on the milling machine. And I'll show you what <clears throat> what this looks like right out of the gate. Here's one that has not been ground yet. Here's one that has been ground. So this little inside corner here has just got a very rough um, uh, milled surface. It's got a corner radius on it. It's pretty hard to explain what's going on in such a tiny little spot. I think it's better if we uh, if we go over to the whiteboard and draw some pictures. <laughs> there, that always helps me understand. Uh, hopefully, it helps you too. So uh, let's go over the board and we'll talk about uh, shaping the wheel, how to work your way into a corner, how to do the plunge cut, how to do the wall cut because you're cutting in two different directions. So let's uh, let's go over there and talk about how we create that inner. Uh, uh, inner corner. Hey guys, welcome to the board, and uh, we're going to go over some of the uh, some of the shaping of the wheels. I've got some stuff drawn on the board. I got the type of wheel I use, and how we shape the wheel, and how we make the cut to, to keep the uh, the temperature down and keep from burning the part. It's very easy to burn the part when you're side wheeling. So uh, first of all, is wheel selection uh, in the um, uh, engineer's black book there's a section on grinding 
And what's nice about this is it helps you select grinding wheels here. You got the types of wheels over here, so you got all the shapes of wheels over here. But then it's got a common uh, nomenclature for wheel selection without all the manufacturers' uh, part numbers and embellishments being uh, thrown in there. So it's got uh, the grades of, of uh, wheels and stuff in there. So it uh, it helps you make a selection on your wheel without getting sucked into the uh, Norton nomenclature or the uh, Radiac nomenclature, you know, all these other brands, so it doesn't really pull you into that. So that's what's nice about the uh, uh, the quick reference in the black book. And uh, the wheel we chose is a Type 13, which is a, uh, right down here on the bottom, that's a plate type wheel. So it's a Type uh, 13 wheel. And uh, they start off with a 32A. Now don't confuse that with uh, grit and hardness. That's a type of wheel. 32A, according to this, uh, is a strong, sharp, monocrystalline aluminum oxide. Uh, 32A is very common, uh, a very commonly used wheel. Uh, the one we used over there is actually is a Norton 32A. So that's the uh, type of wheel, and, the, and, it, and it actually describes the type of grit and some of the structure. Uh, 46 is my hardness or 46 is my grit, and K is my hardness. I chose a, a fairly hard wheel. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it goes from very soft to soft, to medium to hard to very hard. The harder the wheel uh, you get, the less uh, actual cutting teeth you have in there. So uh, the, the hard wheels tend to run, uh, they'll run hot because they just don't have the grain. They've got an awful lot of uh, bonding agents, but very little um, of the actual cutting. So uh, if, if you get a hard wheel and it runs hot, that's why. You can only take the finest of cuts with those hard wheels, but they last a long time. Um, so let's talk about the dress, what we do to that dish wheel. First of all, um, our work is, is here. This is before, and this is after. Um, and what we want to do is we want to create a relief uh, on an inside wall here um, and make a, make a nice sharp inside corner with a relief. So a, if you're measuring something, a burr can drop in that hole and make sure we've got a nice sharp corner. Uh, first thing we do is we take the Type 13 wheel, which is dished, and actually I put it on backwards on my machine. So uh, this is the operator side out here, and this is the spindle side or the tower side in here. And I can put my work down on the mag, put it up against a fence, uh, so I've got an index surface uh, and make sure I'm running parallel. Now, as soon as I get, before I put my work down, I'm going to come in here uh, with a tangent dresser and I'm going to cut this back. I only cut this back one degree. This is exaggerated here, but this angle right here is one degree, right here. So it's not, uh, it's not a large cutback. You know, just it's, it's all I'm doing is taking that radius and tangent dresser and just tipping it back one degree and skimming that surface there. Uh, the bottom, I run, run a diamond across it dead flat and up this back side, I run it straight up vertical. So I've got two 90 degree sides, but that one back side is just tilted back just one degree. This enables me to get all the way down, uh, down in the corner and make sure my surface is very vertical and I'm making the cut all the way down into that trough. Um, now let's talk about how we, you know, how do we go ahead and cut it? Uh, you know, we're all set to cut, we're set up and, you know, we don't want to burn up the wheel and we want to get as many parts out of the, out of our dress as we can. Um, and we want to reduce, uh, reduce heat first and foremost. The heat's going to build up very rapidly. Uh, first thing I do, um, I get the wheel set where the bottom is only, let me erase some of this. I'm going to erase the before here, and then we're going to turn it into an after. We're going to make this part match that one. So I get my wheel just touched off. just touched off on the bottom and the front. And at that point, I'm going to take, I'm going to pull my table back this direction. So I'm essentially I'm pulling the wheel into the work. Um, 
and I'm going to run side to side, but I'm, I'm not going to do any plunge cuts. I'm not going to go down at all. I'm going to bring it straight in. So all I'm doing is traveling this direction with the wheel and taking my work this direction. So I'm going to run that in uh, and, and, and keep traversing until this vertical surface is clean. And I, and I see it's got a good cleanup or I'm to spec or, you know, if I'm actually measuring something uh, on my little squares, I just make sure uh, I just run it till, uh, till I've got a full cleanup. Now, after that, you know, we, we, we've uh, run back and forth, we've got it clean, but we've, we've already created an inside radius. We've already got an inside radius there from the milling, you know, this, this little sharp groove right here, and we've taken some of it out, but not all of it. Uh, we still need to plunge to create that, uh, um, um, create that nice sharp inner corner. So what do we do next? Next thing I do is I'm going to back out. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull my work this direction, effectively pulling my work this direction, and I'm only going to do it one thousandth of an inch. And now I've created some clearance here to this face, and uh, I'm ready to plunge. I've already got my dial set, you know, after I've uh, touched off here on this large surface, I've got my down feed dial set to zero. Now I'm going to plunge, and I only take it down about 20 thousandths. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't generate that much of a radius on those, uh, on those grinder wheels. So at this point, I've, I've already backed out my 1,000th. Get that out of there, get that out of there, get that out of there. Okay, wheel comes down or work comes up. And uh, I take that 20,000, 0, 2, 0. So now I've, I've worked the wall pull back, I've plunged, I've made this groove right here, and now all that's left to do is I need to step, third step. When you come back, now we're going to bring the wheel back in this way, and the work back out that way, and it's not going to be much. It's only going to be a thou or two until you're clean again. Um, and we're just going to do it again until clean. What you'll see in there down in this groove, as you as you developed your uh, developed your groove, you're actually going to see a little step right here where you backed off uh, that thousandth of an inch. You will see that little step in there, and after you've plunged, you're going to just stay at that depth, and now you're going to work your way back in this way, a thou or two until you see that little step disappear and you get a clean grind across the entire face. And we've just created that. Um, you know what's important on little fussy stuff like this? Man, you got to be able to see. These are, these are uh, Coke bottle, I guess you can see my magnification there. These are Coke bottle safety glasses. I recommend everybody get something like this. You got to be able to see and just the slight variations when you're making those passes. You want to be able to see that, that uh, the grinding hash marks on there and be able to tell when you've made a full clean and when you've created that inside corner. All right, I hope this helps uh, a lot of people out. Um, I've, I've gotten a lot of emails regarding uh, grinding up to an inside corner. And uh, this is my wheel selection. This is my dressing technique. And this is what's worked for me. You know, if you've got a better idea or you've got another... Uh, way of going about it, you know, shoot me an email or leave a comment down below. We'll, uh, I'll be happy to discuss it with you. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Okay, I thought I'd do a little voiceover here. And you can see I'm just barely touched off on the surface. If you look at the back fence, you'll see a very thin silver line where I've just touched the uh, corner radius of the milling work. And I'm going to work my way back into that wall and you're going to see that little silver line get bigger and eventually completely disappear. Okay, well we're still running dry here and we're just touching off.
but that little corner radius, the milled corner radius, is going to start ramping up here pretty quick. We got a little coolant going now, and you can see that little silver line getting bigger and bigger as we as we pass by. You can still see the hardening scale and everything uh, in black above the silver line, but uh, it's getting worked out there pretty quick. I'm only doing a, about half thousand step overs to grind that wall. Now I'm pulling the table back and I'm getting set up for my plunge cut. There's a pass with no contact. Do a quick inspect, make sure the wall is clean. And now we're going to start plunging. We're going to go down 20 thousandths and create the groove. But we are one thousandth away from the wall. And again, these are about half thousand step downs. These aren't uh, these aren't monster cuts. You've got a very thin, very fragile edge of your wheel. You don't want to take a lot off, and you don't want to build up uh, any heat. Uh, just flood it hard with coolant and make the plunge. Nice slow pass, make sure it's sparked out. Now we're going to work our way back into the wall. You can probably see that little step I was talking about. And we're just working our way into the wall and getting a final clean on that. A couple of little spark out runs here. Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed part two of, uh, of the series of grinding to an inside corner. Uh, you've ground inside of here, and you've ground inside of here, and you've ground inside of here uh, on all your squares. And this is part two, we're gonna, and in the next one we're going to be grinding 90 degrees the outer fences. And we're going to be doing, we're going to be establishing parallelism and square at the same time. So uh, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.